In this video, we'll see how to use the animation engine called Manim. For those who don't know, Manim was developed by Grant Sanderson for his YouTube channel 3Blue1Brown. Then he open sourced the code and now there are two versions, his original one and a community edition. The community edition is more actively maintained and updated than the original, so it is the recommended one to start with and the one we'll be using today. I also wrote a blog post about Manim on my blog and it includes a link to the Jupyter Notebook in this video. Before we begin, let's install Manim using Conda. This will automatically install dependencies such as FFmpeg and PyCairo. However, you'll still have to install LaTeX separately, and I recommend installing the full package. In the first cell, we are importing everything from Manim into the current namespace and setting some configuration parameters. Now, to write a Manim animation, you need to create a class that will inherit from Manim's scene class. There are actually a few types of scenes you can inherit from, but we'll focus on this one today. I suggest you check the documentation to read about the other ones. Inside our custom class, we need to overload the construct method with the actual animation code. In this example, we are first creating some text object and built-in shapes, circle and regular polygon. Notice that even though we created the objects, they are not automatically added to the scene. Let's see what happens if we comment out all this section first. If I run the cell, oh, and by the way, if you want to render into the cell, you have to use this magic command at the top. Manim, then this flag is for the quality. Q is for quality, K is for 4K. If you want medium quality, you do M. You can also do H for high quality. After that, you need to include then the actual name of the class and it has to match. And yeah, let's render this. Let's run the cell. And we get a big black square. We can add objects to the scene by doing self.add and we add, let's say, our text. Now we run the scene. We get this. There is no animation. This is just one single frame. Because when you do self.add, you put whatever shape is in there automatically into the scene fully completed. If we wanted to do an animation, then we use the code that we had originally. Here we have self.play. Whenever you want to animate something, you will use play to create the animation. And there are different types of animations, uh, how you can put the object onto the scene. Write is good for text, but you can actually use it for any other object. It tries to simulate the way you would handwrite text. So if we run that, here's what we get. Here is the final animation. Example, that's our text. That's a shift circle. Now we are using a transform and copying the hexagon into three pieces. All of that is happening here. First we write the text, that's the animation of the text showing up. Then we write text.animate, that's when you want the animation to actually be shown. We do shift, up. Up is a vector that is already part of Manim. It's a vector with three elements for x, y, z directions. And since it's a vector, you can also multiply by scalar or add other vectors like down, left, right to shift to, to whatever position you want. We do the self.wait method, which pauses the animation for whatever time in seconds that you include here. Then we do draw border then fill. This is another way to animate objects. This one will draw the circle first, just the outside, and then fill in the color, which we set up here as blue. Now we wait again. And then I'm applying the transform method to transform the circle into the hexagon. Here the runtime parameter just tells Manim how long this animation in particular should take. Then we wait again for half a second. And I'm creating a copy of the hexagon and animating it to shift to the left by three times the left vector. We do the same to the right and keep the original one in the center because the other ones are just copies. So that's a very basic Manim scene. Let's see another example. One very useful Manim tool is that you can actually animate code. Here it is. And this is actually the code from the previous animation that I just put as text. And uh, this is very useful if you try to show something and you want to show the code on the side because you could actually mix this two. Let me see if we can do one quickly here. So the first part will be copy this. 
Okay. I'm copying that part. After that, I could do self.play. We will do render code dot animate dot scale point three. And then we're going to shift it to the left times three. Okay, maybe three is a little bit small. Let's do four. And I also want to shift it up. So since these are all vectors, you can just combine them and add them. I'm going to do up times two. Okay, that's much quicker. Then we shift up. Okay, so after shifting, let's say we wait. So dot wait one second. And now I, I actually want to show the code. So let's just copy this part. I'm going to put a comment. All right. So now we have our text, the circle, the regular polygon, and all the animation that goes with it. One thing that we will use in this case that will be very useful is, let's call them objects. We're going to create a group. It's called a B group. And we are going to add all of our items here. Text, circle, and hexagon into one group. The advantage of a B group is that you can bundle several objects into one and then just apply a single animation that will affect the entire group. Before animating, I actually want to reduce the, the objects. Objects dot scale point seven so that they can fit together with the code. And we're going to do objects dot move to to the right. Right, we have this animation, we show the code, then we shift the code to make some space for the actual animation. In this case, I could have actually shifted a little bit more. Okay, so I'll shift the code, say four, and I'll shift this to the right times two. Let's see how that looks. There we have the new animation. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, in this case, it fits well. Before we continue, I would like to ask a favor. YouTube Analytics tells me that most people watching are not subscribed. So if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the notification bell. Now let's get back to the video. What I would like to do now is to highlight each line of code as the animation progresses. But to do that, we need to know how the code object works in Menem. Looking at the documentation, we can see that code is a composite of container objects such as vgroup and paragraph. To access each of the main components of code, we can index some objects from our code object. For instance, at index 0, we have the window encapsulating the code. At index 1, we have the line numbers. And at index 2, we find the actual code lines. Since we want to highlight each line of code individually, we need to work with this last subgroup and subindex it. There are probably many ways to accomplish this goal, but one that comes to mind, for example, is to use the indicate animation which momentarily changes the color and shape of an object to bring attention to it. I went ahead and added some lines to our previous code. Here I'm using an index variable so that I can keep track of the line I want to highlight with indicate. Then I'm incrementing that index after every line. Now let's take a look at the final animation. To end the video, I want to show you a few examples I made using Manim to demonstrate some features. The first one is a matrix animation. A matrix in Manim has methods that allow you to get a hold of each column or row or brackets and animate them as you like. Lately, I've been working on neural network videos, so I used Manim to create some animations. Like this neural network diagram or this one of a gradient descent graph. I don't have time to explain this right now. But if you want to create graph animations like this one, read the manual documentation for value tracker, number plane, and always redraw. So that was all for today. Let me know if you found it useful and if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and subscribing and I'll see you next time.